Today on Florida Sportsman Best Boat. If you're serious about sight fishing in skinny water, we'll be taking a look at the Blue Wave 2200 STL. A flats boat with an overall length of 22 feet 2 inches, a beam of 8 feet, and max horsepower rating of 200. Standout features on the Blue Wave 2200 STL. Sometimes getting to the fish means running in skinny water. A tunnel hole reduces the amount of water that's needed to run on planes safely by funneling water up to the outboard so it may operate at a higher level. The key to sight fishing is being able to see into the water. A console riser elevates the operator, greatly extending their range of visibility. Sight fishing the flats often means getting extremely shallow. A notch transom extends the hull's running surface, providing additional stability and flotation at rest. For the hardcore, no-nonsense offshore fishermen, we'll be looking at the Stewart Boatworks 23, a center console with an overall length of 23 feet 3 inches a beam of 8 feet 6 inches, and max horsepower rating of 300. Standout features on the Stewart Boatworks 23. A sharp bow entry allows for a smooth ride in choppy conditions, keeping everyone on board comfortable when venturing offshore. Quality wiring will not only last longer in the harsh saltwater environment, but it's also easier to inspect and maintain before each fishing excursion. An uncluttered transom keeps the cockpit open for serious fishing, allowing anglers to battle fish around the stern with ease. For those seeking blue water capability in a manageable size, we'll be taking a look at the Cobia 261cc, a center console with an overall length of 26 feet 1 inch, a beam of 9 feet 3 inches, and max horsepower rating of 400. Standout features on the Cobia 261cc, Heading offshore often means bringing lots of gear. Easy console access featuring a large front opening door makes it easier to store gear and use the head. A plush helm seat with folding armrests makes long runs offshore more comfortable and enjoyable while also adding a measure of safety. The better access you have to your systems, the more likely you are to properly maintain them. Proper systems access allows for easy inspection and maintenance, ensuring a safer day in blue water. Join our hosts Dave East and Rick Riles as they conduct walkthroughs and review key features, all to help you decide if this is the best boat for you. Welcome to this episode of Florida Sports and Best Boat. I'm your host Dave East. This is my co-host Captain Rick Riles. Well, you liked that Blue Wave, didn't you? You know what? It was the size of a bay boat, but they built that boat to get up on the flats. The riser gets you really, really high. You love your towers on your sport I, fish I, boat? I like that riser, well, I gotta be honest. this was a tower for a flats boat. Get you up off the water where you can see. It's a 22-foot boat, the size of maybe a typical bay boat, but it's got the function of a flats boat. Well, don't confuse any of that stuff with that 23 Stewart Boatworks. That is an offshore boat, and you know I love her heritage. Comes from the Bahamas, has that Bahamian look to it. I love the solid deck all the way up. There was just a whole lot. That was a great offshore boat in a smaller, manageable package. What Stuart Boatworks was able to do with that boat is they blended old world charm, if you want to call it that, with some new world technology. Because when you look at the wiring on that boat, it was yacht quality. It's not what you would expect to see out of a boat in the Bahamas, but yet it has the function of a good, hardcore, solid boat. Not a lot of frills, but you don't need a lot of frills in that boat. Another well done boat, Cobia 26. You know what, the Cobias of the past compared to the Cobias that are coming out of Maverick today, wow, totally different craft. Boat was unbelievable. The fit and finish of that boat, I'd put it up against any other boat out there. Kobe is evolving really fast. You're exactly right. Them as a brand, they're evolving very fast. There was a lot of things to like on that 26 that you normally see on bigger boats. Well, what we've got today is three boats that are outstanding in their field, okay? So let's start breaking them down because if you want to fish ultra skinny or if you want to run way offshore, we've got a boat for you in this episode. When we come back, hosts Dave East and Rick Riles take a closer look at a boat engineered for shallow water sight fishing, the Blue Wave 2200 STL. This segment brought to you by Costa Del Mar. See what's out there. Why are more and more boat owners using Tough Coat Marine, the world's number one rubberized non-skid? Because it's so attractive and so easy to apply. The rubber granules used only in Tough Coat Marine is extremely comfortable to my bare feet and knees. From pontoons to houseboats, flats boats to sport fishers, commercial to recreation, even hides nasty spider crabs. 
for all boat decks or docks. Tough Coat Marine, the world's number one rubberized non-skid. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts Dave East and Rick Riles as they take a closer look at the Blue Wave 2200 STL. Representing the 17 to 22 foot class in the flats boat category, the Blue Wave 2200 STL has an overall length of 22 feet 2 inches, a beam of 8 feet, and a max horsepower rating of 200. Designed to navigate across the shallowest flats, she has a draft of 7 to 8 inches, a dry weight of 1,550 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 50 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts, Dave East and Rick Riles. This is the Blue Wave 2200 STL. If you're into skinny water fishing and you want to chase your prey up into super, super shallow water, this boat is absolutely mission specific for just that. Well, you and I both know you can't be all things to all people, right? Okay. Blue Wave didn't want to be that with this boat. They wanted you to be able to see your quarry. They wanted you to be able to get shallow and they wanted you to not leave a big footprint. By that, I mean there's not a big pressure weight goes out ahead of this boat partly because of the tunnel and partly because of the way they designed it to float so skinny. Well, I'm glad you mentioned the tunnel. When you've got a boat that can jump up on a plane quick in shallow water, that's what this hull was designed to do. It's got a tunnel, it's got a key slot transom. We're going to make our way back there in a little while and I'll explain it and it'll make a lot of sense. For right now, let's start here at the bow. Let's look at the way they've got their interior laid out. We're going to see why this boat is set up for mission-specific shallow water fishing. We talked about the stern of this hull being a little different. Well, so was the bow. You got a really, really sharp entry and you got a lot of flare. What that does, it gives you a good ride, especially in the chop, but it's got enough flare to knock that spray down to keep you dry. It does, and I wish manufacturers would quit getting fancy up here. I really like what they've done. Step, recessed casting platform, rod box, fish box, insulated, insulated, done. That's the best use of space for the bow of the boat. Well, it is, plus there's enough room where if you and I want to fish up here together, we can. You're right. Very well laid out, everything's the right size. Now let's go back and check out that riser because I love it. Well, we're moving on up to the east side. Man, do I like this. Well, George, <laughs> yeah, you know what? This should seem like old homeschool week for you because you're used to a big boat with a flybridge or a Marlin Tower because it's so much better to be able to look down into the water. And that's really what this riser is all about. It lets you look down into the water. It gives you a, a high position to command the boat from, keeps you from running aground, but it just lets you see what's underneath the oh, water. Just, just look at the difference from when we were standing on the deck a minute ago. Makes a huge There's difference. a huge amount of difference. And boy, does that help you when there's a school of redfish ahead of you. I mean, that's why you see so many boats now going to second stations. But the problem with second stations is it takes you out of the action. With this, you're one step away all the time. You want to go throw a cast? Fine, step, go throw it. I mean, it's just so much nicer than being either deck level or being separated into a second station. You know what this is? This is a 22-foot boat with the storage of a 30-footer. Anything you can store in a 30-foot center console, you can find a place for under the riser in this boat. Well, as we move aft, we're going to look at the rear casting deck, and then we're going to talk about the key slot transom we had talked about earlier. Let me tell you, this back deck, designed for the fishermen. Another elevated platform that you're going to be able to see better from, but I'm standing on jump seats. It's got a center live well where a live well should be. You taught me all about center of gravity. This is well laid out back here. I don't understand the key slot transom. Well, what it does is the hull actually extends back past the motor and it works very much like trim tabs. There's even a little tiny hook on, in the bottom of the hull on both sides. What this does, when you throttle up, there's no bow rise. She's up and she's over fast. Gets you, you, ne you never lose your line of sight, but what it does, it gets the boat planed off without gouging up the flat and leaving a big wheel ditch. Which decreases the amount of water that you need to float in. Not only float and take off, but this boat has a tunnel and it's got a jack plate. When she's up and running, you can bring that motor up on the jack plate. This boat will run in eight inches of water. I see. And it'll get up in much shallower water because it has no bow rise to it. Exactly. Right? You compare this to another 22-foot boat out there, and you need literally half of the water of a standard bay boat that would be in the same size. Ah, sounds like a great idea. If you want to be a shallow water sight fisherman, which there is a whole lot of people going to that kind of fishing. When we return, hosts Dave East and Rick Riles step aboard a boat that has both form and function offshore, the Stewart Boat Works 23. This segment brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. 
At Yamaha, reliability is a family tradition. Meet the next generation. Four new advanced technology-inspired inline four-cylinder performers. Bred from the reliability and boater satisfaction that is part of Yamaha's DNA, they prove that when power gets lighter, faster, stronger, and smarter, boating gets even better and more satisfying for boaters like you. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts Dave East and Rick Riles as they discuss the importance of choosing the proper life jacket in this week's Best Boat Seminar Series. Everybody knows that life jackets are required on a boat, but man, is there a lot of difference between what's required and what you should take with you. Well, this will get you past a Coast Guard inspection, the old Mae West style, but we all know this is not comfortable to wear. If you have to use it in an emergency, it's going to float you upright, but it's not going to do what even this style will do because this one will hold your insulation in better, and if you're in the water for a long period of time, this will hold your body heat in better, but it's still not as good as what we have on. Well, right, and you can fish in this one. Okay, but these, when I get off the boat at the end of the day, I'm notorious for forgetting I have it on until I sit in the truck and feel it on my back. You just, it just becomes part of you, makes it so much easier to stay safe. Well, if you have to inflate it, you can pull this to do that, but it also auto inflates. If you happen to fall overboard, maybe hit your head, you're unconscious, it'll automatically inflate and keep you upright. You said it great. You said the problem with this stuff is you never use it until your life's on the line. Okay, they call this toy grade for a reason. Your life's a little more important than that. Get the best life jackets you can before you head out on the water. Now, let's check out the Stewart Boat Works 23. Representing the 15 to 23 foot class in the center console category, the Stewart Boat Works 23 has an overall length of 23 feet 3 inches, a beam of 8 feet 6 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 300. Built for a smooth ride when the waters churn up offshore, she has a draft of 18 inches, a dead rise of 17 degrees, a dry weight of 4,500 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 100 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts, Dave East and Rick Riles. We're aboard the Stewart Boat Works 23, and you know, you and I have spent more than one day in the Bahamas, and you see a lot of boats that look very, very similar to this, but what this boat is, it's a step up from what those boats are, and, and they're famous over there, but this boat is a little bit better. Very similar hull though, Dave. And let me tell you why that's important. In the Bahamas, your boat is your primary mode of transportation. It's not your yeah. toy. Mm -hmm. So we know the hull is proven, but they've almost taken this boat to a yacht quality. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Uh, we, yes. We've got the great running hull, but man, is it finished nice inside. It is. The spray rail that they have at the bow. I didn't see any water come up and over, but I saw you shoot water 40 feet out to both sides of the boat. This boat stays dry in a head sea and in a following sea. And she rides good in a head sea because she's got a real deep V. Now, a deep V is, like everything in a boat, a compromise. She's a great head sea boat, okay, which is my preference. I always want a good head sea boat because I can get offshore. This is an offshore boat. Oh, it's absolutely a dedicated offshore boat. All right, let's start looking at the interior, how they've laid this out starting up here at the bow with the seating. I like this bow seating for a couple of reasons. This is a perfect height for me to stand on or throw a cast net and, and be very, very comfortable. I'm still in the boat. They thought this area through real well. I like the bow seating. Well, not just the height of the seating, they got the height of the gunnel right too because the family's gonna sit up here, your wife or your kids. This is the exact height that needs to be to be a comfortable backrest. But if you look at the overall fit and finish of this boat, let's face it, it's gorgeous on the inside. I think we described it best when we called it yacht quality. Yes, absolutely. See, let me show you what I mean. You see how everything's labeled, everything is together. But let me teach you something. The batteries are under here and the battery switches are under here. That means very minimal cable between the battery and the switch. It's just a smart thing. Under the console, every time you go down in there, you're going to see the batteries. They're easy to look at, they're easy to check, they're easy to maintain. Well, you're right. And you know what your number one issue is going to be with batteries in a boat is going to be corrosion at your terminal. You can Absolutely. avoid a lot of that if you stay on top of it because you look at it every time you go in the console. Now, look at this helm seat. It's really nothing spectacular, but it fits the boat. It doesn't need to be any more than this. It's a great place to lean. It's got a little bit of storage underneath. Your rod holders are in the back. Your backrest is removable. Very simple, but you know what? I'm not sure I would do anything different than what they've already done. And for a 23-foot boat, they decided to go with a pair of 150s. Most of these boats would be powered by a big single 
like a 300 or something like that. There are times when you may want a twin engine set up and you can do it with this 23 foot boat. Also, if you're live baiting and you get over a wreck, shut one engine off. There's no reason to run a big 300 when you have a pair of 150s. You shut one off, now you're only running on a single 150, so you're gonna save some fuel. Well, you're also gonna eliminate sea anchors. Think about that, a 300 naturally throws a bigger wheel and idles a little faster than a 150 does. And the 150 is gonna enable you to not pull sea anchors to keep your live baits in the water. That's just what you want, that makes them look natural. Well, 23 foot boat that can run on twins, we don't see it very often, but if you want that option, it's a good thing that Stewart offers that. Now before we leave, let me show you why an uncluttered transom works. You're sitting there, I'm standing here. An uncluttered transom means there's nothing to stumble or trip over when you've got to get across the boat in a hurry. Well, look how much more room it leaves you here in the cockpit of the boat as well. If we're going to be bottom fishing, even if we're trolling, the more room you have back here, the better fishing boat this is. This 23-foot boat is laid out like a fisherman wants a 23-foot boat. She's got great application offshore. Well, not only the application offshore, if you're looking for a boat that has that level of fit and finish, that's a step above what's out there in the market right now, this boat fits that You're saying she's got the wow factor, aren't you? Absolutely. You look at her and you go, wow, that's really pretty. I know exactly what you're talking about. When we come back, host Dave East and Rick Riles check out a boat built for the dedicated blue water angler and their family, the Cobia 261cc. This segment brought to you by MyFWC. Life jackets save lives. Dads are great. They keep us safe. They teach us all kinds of stuff and do fun things with us. They can be really funny. I think about my dad a lot. I miss him. I wish he had thought about me and more in his life jacket. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts Dave East and Rick Riles as they check out the Cobia 261cc. Representing the 26 to 27 foot class in the center console category, the Cobia 261cc has an overall length of 26 feet 1 inch, a beam of 9 feet 3 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 400. Designed to venture into blue water in comfort, she has a draft of 17 inches, a dead rise of 21.5 degrees, a dry weight of 4,600 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 161 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts, Dave East and Rick Riles. This is the Cobia 261, and although you've heard the name before, this is a brand new design out of Maverick Boat Company. And it's gorgeous, and I tell you what, it has its own mission. It's a 26-foot boat. It's laid out to fish much bigger. You know how sometimes you say an athlete plays faster than he is? This boat fishes bigger than it is. Well, on the other end of the spectrum, though, it's only 26 feet. This boat can easily be towed with a half-ton pickup. It's powered with a pair of twin 150s, so you don't need a great big outboard to push it. It's going to be more fuel efficient, but yet you get the big boat feel. She's got a lot of freeboard, okay? It, the way it's laid out, it's got the great room in the cockpit. Everything is laid out for serious fishing, and yet you put it in a 26-foot package, makes it very manageable for the average person. Well, for a trailerable boat that you're going to take offshore, let's show you some of the features that are inside this boat. Okay, they've included bow seating on the 261, but it doesn't overpower the boat. It's enough to comfortably get up here and sit, and you have insulated fish boxes up here if you want to use it for fishing. Right, and all this, like so many boats, all these cushions, of course, everything's removable, pops out, and it's a little more hardcore platform to stand on if you're going to gaff and fish or throw a cast net. You know, storage is a premium on any 26-foot boat, but if you're going to keep stuff inside your center console, having a nice big door like this not only gives you good access in and out of the console for using the head, but look at how much gear you can get through there. A lot of people look inside the console and think, oh, I can put all my stuff in here. Well, you can't if you can't fit it through the door, silly. They addressed it with this, these big opening front doors like that. I love them on this size boat. Well, it's got a positive latch that holds it open. So let's say we're in rough conditions. Boat's pitching back and forth. You need to get inside the console. This is a safe way to do it. You open the door, it stays open. You can get all your gear handed out. The door's locked in place, but when you're ready to close it, you pull the release, and now it shuts. It's just an easy way to get in and out of the console, and it's safe, especially if you get out there and it's rough. 
Another nice feature in rough conditions is the integrated handrail. As you move fore and aft, you've got something really secure to hang on to. As we get to the back of the console, look how simple it is. It's a nice, clean layout. You have plenty of room for your flush mount electronics. And you know what, call me old fashioned, but I like switches. I like I switches too. I want to see if it's on, and I want to see if it's, it's off. off. That's because we're old guys, but you're right. But you know where this helm really stands out to me? Generally, a 26-foot center console has a rocket launcher rod sticking out, a bench right here. No, no, no. This boat has big boat seating in place of the rocket launcher. It makes a great leaning post to lean against, but you're making that long offshore run to fish with the big boats? Fine. Swing her down, and you are as comfortable as you can be at the helm of a 45-footer. Well, you've got armrest. These seats slide fore and aft. This is something you're not going to find on a typical rocket launcher, which, you know, they're good to lean on, but they're really not that comfortable. All right, but keep in mind, if you're going to make a 26-footer into a big boat, you've got to maximize every inch. Let me show you what else they did with this helm seating area. You come around back, and it's a full tackle station. We've got drawers, we've got trays, we've got everything we need to be ready for any situation when you get offshore. The rear stern seating is folded out of the way. That way it's not going to cut into your fishing cockpit. But you can lift this area up. You can get to all your systems for access. That way you can maintain it. You can check on your pumps, your hoses, your seacocks. Lift the backrest out of the way. Keep the seat folded up. Now here's your fishing cockpit you wanted with your live well. Great live well. In the transom where it belongs. Oval shape. Plenty of water flow through it. A great place to keep your live baits. They should live a long time in there. Here again, if you're going to make a little boat into a big boat, Every area's got to have more than one function. This is how they dialed in their stern seating. I think they did a great job. It's a place you can sit, it's a place you can walk past, and you can lift it up and get maximum accessibility to your pumps and systems. So you have a 26-foot boat, it's trailerable, you can keep it in your garage, you can push it with a small set of twins, but yet it can fish right alongside these big battle wagons. It can get just about anywhere a big boat can get at a level of commitment that it fits into the family. Well, if you want more information on the three boats that you've seen today or any of the other boats that we've tested this season in Best Boat, go to our website, floridasportsman.com. Or we'll see you next week on another episode of Florida Sportsman Best Boat. When filming for Florida Sportsman Best Boat, the cast and crew docked and dined at Fort Pierce City Marina in Fort Pierce, Florida, featuring a full-service, state-of-the-art dock system within walking distance from excellent restaurants and historic downtown Fort Pierce.